Footage has been released showing the exchange of bodies of Russian and Ukrainian servicemen who died in Russia's Kursk region. As can be seen from the photos taken and shared by the Russian military, dozens of Russian soldiers captured by the Ukrainian army have been returned. Some of them are wounded. At the same time, Ukrainian fighters who were in captivity have also been returned. It should be noted that the Ukrainian army launched large-scale incursion into Russia's Kursk region three months ago. It should be noted that this is the first prisoner exchange since the beginning of hostilities in Kursk. South Korea and the US on Friday conducted their first-ever joint live-fire exercise using unmanned aerial vehicles as part of efforts to demonstrate their readiness. South Korea's RQ-4B Global Hawk reconnaissance aircraft and the US MQ-9 Reaper strike drone were mobilized for the training, according to South Korea's Air Force. South Korea and the US have been expanding their regular military drills to cope with North Korea's evolving nuclear threats. The exercise took place a day after North Korea test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile, which demonstrated a potential advancement in its ability to launch long-range nuclear attacks on the mainland US. South Korea's foreign ministry said on Friday it has imposed unilateral sanctions on 11 North Korean individuals and four organizations for their alleged roles in procuring missile components and generating foreign currency to fund Pyongyang's weapons program. The sanctions are largely symbolic given that financial transactions between the Koreas have been suspended for years. The situation in the Pokrovsk, Kurakov sector remains tough for the Ukrainian armed forces, but the Russians haven't managed to break through the front lines. Dmitro Zamilo, co-founder and executive director of the Ukrainian Security and Cooperation Center, shared this. Fortunately, reports of the front line collapsing are not true. Our troops are under control, but Russia has a significant numerical advantage. For instance, in the south, covering Crimea, Kherson and Zaporizhia. And Zaporizhia, there are around 200,000 Russian troops working to strengthen their positions. In the Pokrovsk Kurakov sector, they've gathered about 120,000 troops, including reserves. Although our artillery situation has improved and we're getting closer to matching their numbers, now about 1 to 2, it's still very challenging to target Russian infantry and we're feeling the shortage of our own infantry units, he said on Espresso TV. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces are actively defending their positions. As they retreat, they're inflicting heavy losses on the enemy, Zamilo noted. In very tough conditions, Ukrainian forces are working hard to hold the line. Reserves are being moved to the front to the most critical areas. For instance, the 14th Regiment of Unmanned Systems Forces is reinforcing Tourette's. Some units from the 128th Brigade and the Presidential Brigade are heading to the area north of the Kurakov Reservoir. The situation is extremely challenging. The Russians are trying to break through to the H-15 highway to cut off the main supply line for Ukrainian troops in Kurakov. In Selidov, the Russian army is trying to level the front line to launch an offensive on the city of Pokrovsk, the military expert explained. The Ukrainian armed forces units are actively preparing to defend the city. According to local residents, all the shops at the Pokrovsk market are closed. This may be due to decisions by the Ukrainian command to close all roads around the city, prohibiting entry and exit, which was notified to the population by the head of the local administration, Sergei Dobryak, who called on them to evacuate. The embattled frontline city of Pokrovsk has been a focal point of Russia's offensive in the Donetsk sector in recent months. The city is a key logistics hub for Ukrainian forces. Fortifications are being built in Pokrovsk and we are already entering the city and certain areas of the city will be blocked. So please leave these areas, not entering or leaving the city, Sahi Dobryak, head of the Pokrovsk military administration said. Several echelons have already been built in the city, which will partially block the streets and neighborhoods of Pokrovsk. Entry and exit to the city will not be entirely blocked, Dobryak said, clarifying earlier remarks on national television. Dobryak's announcement follows reports that Russia has captured the nearby town of Selido.
As North Korean troops prepare to join Russian forces in the war on Ukraine, Kiev is stepping up a psychological warfare campaign to target the North Korean soldiers, a high-ranking Ukraine official said. The Ukrainian military intelligence service-run project I Want to Live released a Korean language video message on YouTube and X. The project also posted a Korean language text message on Telegram. The messages urged North Korean soldiers to surrender, arguing that they do not have to meaninglessly die on the land of another country. It also offered to provide food, shelters and medical services. U.S. says it expects North Korean troops to enter combat against Ukraine in the coming days in Kursk. Ukrainian servicemen, with the help of the Kursk operation, have gained an advantage over Russia that they have never had during the entire full-scale war, experts say. According to them, it consists in the fact that the Ukrainian armed forces do not need to defend any of the Russian cities in the Kursk region. You just fight where it's advantageous and retreat when it's not, and that's a really effective way to fight. Rand Corporation military expert Michael Bonnert tells Business Insider, the war on its own territory has reportedly caused the Ukrainian military to cling fiercely to some cities until it had no choice but to retreat. Bakhmut is one example. The report says, the full-scale war has put Ukraine at a disadvantage, experts say, since most of the fighting is taking place within the territory of one country. However, that changed in August with the start of the operation in the Kursk region as the Ukrainian armed forces can now take advantage of the terrain and fight in the most effective way. And they can do it without consequences. Bonnert said, adding that these are not Ukrainian cities, so the Ukrainian military can choose the most advantageous positions for combat and defense in order to be able to build fortifications. Stimson Center military expert William Alberk noted that Russia has so far recaptured the easiest parts and that the Russian occupiers will have a much harder time dealing with the rest of the Ukrainian bulge. Ukraine, he said, can choose when and where to defend itself. Albert also added that Ukraine could create kill zones and traps to slow down Russia's advance since there is no need to defend the entire stronghold. It's a huge operational advantage for a commander when you don't have to draw any lines in the sand, he said. The U.S. has identified around 8,000 North Korean soldiers in the Kursk region. This may take part in combat operations in the coming days, according to a statement from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He noted that, according to U.S. estimates, there are about 10,000 North Korean military personnel in Russia. The most recent information indicates that as many as 8,000 of those North Korean forces have been deployed to the Kursk region. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days, Blinken specified. According to him, the Russians are training North Korean soldiers in artillery, drones and basic infantry operations, including trench digging. This indicates that the North Koreans are being prepared for use in frontline operations. If these troops engage in combat or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would be counted legitimate military targets, the U.S. Secretary of State emphasized.